Whether you prefer saltwater fishing, some hot action in this hole, or a day on the river, we've got it all right here on Alaska Outdoors Television. There are people in this world that go looking for adventure. And then there are those that live it every day. Alaska Outdoors Television. Experience Alaska like never before. Today I'm fishing the Kenai River. Ever since I was a kid, I had a deep love for fishing. It's hard to explain, but nothing else brought me as much joy and satisfaction as fishing did. Let's go to King Salmon 101 here, super condensed version. We start out fishing for kings. Thumb on the spool, flip the lever, let her slide out. We're gonna go 55 today, okay? That's your magic number. 55 feet, click them over, stick them in a rod holder, sit back and tell stories. Wait for that right there. So when I got a call from KTVA, our local CBS affiliate in Anchorage, Alaska, to host a weekly fishing report, I was interested. I figured as long as it didn't cut into my fishing time, I was all in. I think it ever peeled line. And the line starts moving off the side of the boat. Reel up, pull it out of there and reel up, Tony. He's actually on there. Reel like the devil, and then when you catch up to him, hit him. Yeah. When I set the hook on it, it was like setting into like a yeah. Mack truck. I mean, it didn't move. There you go. Yeah, he was running upstream. Woohoo, Tony! I get to travel to some pretty neat places and fish some incredible rivers and lakes and keep the public updated on fishing topics, hot spots, regulations, and whatnot. It's been an absolute blast. This is like the last vestige of the greatest DNA stock of five to six, seven year salt fish, the largest in the world, the best. You know, 40 pound Kenai King, wild fish, sea lice, look at those sea lice. The fish is ready. There he goes. All right, Tony, put it there, buddy. Congratulations. Awesome, man. Thanks. Yeah, that's a good feeling letting that fish go, brother. Today you're going to meet a couple of other guys who have taken their love of fishing in the outdoors and turned it into careers as well. The Tokiak River is a river I've wanted to fish for a long time. It has five species of salmon, as well as rainbow trout, char, dolly varden, and even pike. While here, I'm staying at the Togiak River Lodge. Owner Larry Lunn has owned and operated the lodge since 2006, and has seen some nice sized kings come out of this river. The biggest one I've seen is like 57, but I know I've seen records of fish in the 60s. Really, really? What's the biggest rainbow you've seen come out of here? I saw we caught a 17 pound we figured it was 17 pounds we you know we just took the dimensions off of it i know there's been some bigger ones i know of a 34 incher caught up one of the tributaries so there, there's some beautiful fish two of my buddies matt and john have both turned their passion for fishing into careers both john and matt used to guide at the togiak river lodge today matt is the marketing director with benchmade knives and john has continued his career as a professional fishing guide So well, I was uh, first time here at Togiak River Lodge in 2006. I spent uh, some of the silver season here and then came back in 2007 for kings and silvers as a fishing guide. Uh, this is a really, this is a really special place to me. I, and I don't know if it's necessarily like a, a coming of age story perhaps, but it, it's certainly one of the best summers of my life. John and I had I've been fishing together for quite some time and he knew when the lodge owner asked him if they had anybody that would want to come up and fill in that I would be a good choice. I think, you know, selfishly for John, obviously he, I think, was hoping to get me up there to come fishing with him too. But John, John went on, you know, John's a professional fishing guide now uh, also and, and I've gone on to um, more of the business world, but in the, in the sporting equipment side, obviously. And uh, this really, for us, it, for John, it was his first professional fishing experience too. And, and we both have stayed in the industry. In fact, although this trip is purely for fun, it's also an opportunity for Matt to field test some of Benchmade's prototypes in an environment where good gear counts. 
gear performance is, is absolutely a critical element when we're developing product to understand exactly uh, why we're putting uh, an element into it that we might be. Why a fillet knife is, you know, eight inches for king salmon as opposed to six inches, you know, or, or why you might want a, a gut hook that folds out of the back, or even how that could translate into, um, you know, cutting braided fishing line. There's, there's so many different tactics, you know, and, and one person obviously can't explore them all uh, or understand every single one of them, but having Having been in the field and, and dealing with bad gear and dealing with good gear really does ingrain a level of understanding that you can inject into products if you pay attention to it that takes it beyond just the field and definitely beyond just the test and evaluation R&D lab. Back to business. I'm on the Togiak with two former Togiak River guides. I also used to guide back in the day. With three former guides on the same boat, we shouldn't have any problems finding fish. I have the wireless deal on my fish finder so I can see the image on my telephone when I'm on the back deck. Oh, look at the boil of silvers right there. Look at them busting up on the surface there. My good friend, Captain Andy Mesro, who owns and operates Cracker Jack Sport Fishing Charters out of Seward, Alaska, invited me to go fishing the other day in the Kenai Fjords. Now Andy has been fishing Alaska water since 1983 and has guided anglers to over 30 IGFA light tackle world records. When he's not busy running Cracker Jack sport fishing charters, Andy works as an instructor at the Alaska Maritime Training Center. He teaches navigation, seamanship, and safety to mariners of all levels. The Kenai Fjords is one of my favorite places in Alaska to fish because it opens up the whole Gulf of Alaska, which means there's not just yellow eye, ling cod, halibut, and a variety of rockfish on the menu, but during the right time of the year, you can also catch salmon on their way back to the rivers. Back on the Togiak, it's bobbers and slinkies. Out here, what we're doing right now, you know, you come out here in July, it's the best time of year to catch kings. You're gonna be probably, at least with the Togiak River Lodge, bob bobber fishing and back bouncing, using, using cured salmon eggs. They've got the whole setup. They've got everything that, that any of the anglers would need. One ounce float, yep, so that moves up. And then you got a bobber knot on your main line that you adjust to depth. Nice thing is, though, with these slinkies, instead of the regular bobber weight, you don't have to adjust your depth as much. You can run it a little deeper and this will just drag bottom and that bobber kind of helps to pick it up. It's almost like side drifting, but with an indicator. It's great. Yeah. And from what we've seen, when, when John and I first came out here, there were a lot of different techniques going on. We started throwing bobbers around and, and catching them down low at the bluffs and, and it, it seems to outperform just about, just about anything else. He's absolutely right. Good sized fish. Fishing eggs really is effective and the guys stay busy hooking them. Beautiful fish. But I like to fish, and I like to fly fish, and I really like to fly fish with a two-handed rod and tie my own fly. For me, it brings a sense of self-satisfaction, being able to move the fly delicately or manipulate it into the right zone to catch a fish, which is a little bit harder to do. This is where we're getting, we're trying to get kings. These are chum salmon. I've never caught these. These are like a really underrated fish. They bite really good. They take flies well. Right here on the Togiak. The difference between fly fishing and gear fishing, I mean, they're not even in the same universe. This is a real great way to guarantee a bite, you know? And the fly fishing is a great way to, well, for me to enjoy a day, but it looks like it's not a bad way to guarantee a bite if you're Tony. When Tony showed up, he's telling us he's going to catch kings on the fly, and John and I are like, yeah, yeah, all right. Well, you know, we've had guys out here when we used to guide that spent a week trying to catch kings on the fly, and they caught a couple, and that was it. Tony comes out here, and within 20 minutes, he's got a fish on. Oh, yeah. There we go. There's a nice fish. 
a nice Togiak King on the pink fly. So this is a, a lot fresher. We've been catching some darker, but this is like a nice, this is a nice average size fish probably for the Togiak. How many feet are we? Uh... 190 here, but it's gonna get shallower in a minute. Fishing salt water is a little different than fishing the rivers. Instead of the river moving, we have tides and we fish tides. You know, halibut, rockfish, salmon, they're everywhere in the water column. Today we're using soft plastics and jigs, which are really effective, and also flies. So what happens is when we put the power bait tail on a big jig like this, it'll fish okay for a while and eventually the hook catches the jig and then you don't get that action that makes the fish bite on it. So um, what we found is if we strip them up like this, you get the motion like you would from an octopus or a squid and they don't get hung up on the tail. So I just look for the seam, line up the hook, kind of eyeball it, and uh, push it right on there. And there you pretty much have the same distance between the tail and the hook that you do from a six ounce jig to a 24 ounce jig. It's proportionally about the same. I've really enjoyed spending a little time with Tony and is a technique, you know, watching that technique is cool. For me, being also a, a bit of a fly fisherman, his fishing skills have been really impressive. Watching his casting and the way to fly, especially you know, like on that light stuff, the way he can get his fly just to touch down on the water. So, here's a perfect togiak fish. You can tell the guy's a legend in the game and really has, uh, has put his time in and just has a, a real deep understanding of, of, of the fish in general. Good size fish. Yeah, it is. The truth of the matter is, in Alaska, when the salmon are in, the fishing can be pretty good. The trout fishing, the rest of it, it's all about timing. And some days you can be on it, and some days you can be off it. In fact, it varies week to week. Some hot action in this hole. This king fishery, is, I'm impressed with how many kings are in the, and it's, do you have any idea what the size of the run is? First, they try to reach an escapement of somewhere around 9,500 fish. Right. That's a safe level for them. And we've achieved it almost every year. There's also maybe 10,000 fish caught commercially, right. another 1,500 caught in the subsistence fishery, and maybe 1,000 caught in the sport fishery. So the run's probably 25,000 fish. How, how many fish do you get on your coho run? Well, I think an average run's probably, it's probably somewhere like 50 to 75,000, but sometimes it can be greater than that too. Oh, look what he ate though. This is great. Look at that. Uh, squid. Back on the saltwater, it's time to meet another good friend of mine, Pat Ford. Pat is a professional outdoor photographer who is known internationally for his work, and it's easy to see why. Pat, too, has turned his passion for the outdoors into a career. In fact, part of the reason Pat is here today is to take photographs for Yeti and Tsunami Tackle. It's a tough job, but someone has to do it. But just because he's on the job doesn't mean he can't catch a few fish. With silvers all around the boat, I decided to give the fly rod a shot. Now, which fly should I use? This is a striper fly that we did really well in the East Coast. It doesn't look like much here, but one of the good things about this fly is the hackle tips. When, when you put this in the water, they really come, come alive. And these are, this is basically a mullet fly here for Chesapeake, but it works really good. Like there's a lot of horse herring and big, big herring out, out here this year. And then you can even get crazy and go with stuff like this. 
needle fish. These are a little flatter. I don't like the animation, but these flies do catch fish. This is my favorite design. It's something like this. Actually, this, this wing I like to have where it's actually posted up and this, this hook actually kills properly when you put this in the water. And uh, it's tied on a short shank hook, but that's pretty much it. It's, it's not real complicated. Over the top. It's a hot fish. These fish are a lot hotter than they are when they hit the rivers back home and they don't have to travel as far to get into the rivers. I just think they have more energy left. Back home in Oregon, you might only get like a bite or two a day on some days. And sometimes you whip them both and you just think like, man, that was a great takedown and I just totally botched that. And, and you go through it in your head over and over again. Like, why did, why did I miss that bite? Being out here and getting 120 bites a day and you see how many of them you just whip on, even though they're fantastic bites, it really puts it into perspective that sometimes there is absolutely nothing that you can do about it. There we go. The perfect release. No pliers required. That is one of the coolest things about experiences in the outdoors and fishing and hunting in general, I think, is that you know, it, you're working with things that are outside of your control. And it's also some of the things that frustrate you the most, but it keeps you, uh, it keeps you driven to, it keeps you driven for success, for sure. As the day progressed, so did the fishing. We were here at the end of the king run. These kings are fresh out of the ocean, anxious to get upriver and ornery. But the rainbows were also here, and we caught a couple of nice ones. Oh, there he is. Nice job, buddy. I just had one hit my mouth. Get that, there's no it's a way. dolly, isn't it? Yeah. The fishing this week has been awesome. I, I think we're uh, we're a little bit like almost on a pilot run right now. It, it, it feels like, you know, we're catching a lot of fish. We're not catching 30s and 35 and 40 pounders like you can out here when you're really like deep in the middle of the run, but we, we're catching a lot of fish. You know, we're catching 50, 60, 70 fish a day. Today's trip on the Kenai Fjords wasn't about quantity. There's an unusual rockfish coming up, uh, quillback. It's about catching some pretty awesome, unusual fish. No, let me get him in so you don't, you don't want that one's a bad one to get stuck by. They have some venom in their spines. Hold him up, hold him out. Out, turn right out in front of you. One of the neat things about fishing the Kenai Fjords, or even Prince William Sound for that matter, is you never know what you're gonna get. I've seen them come to the surface and feed. They sit right like this with their eyes just above the water. I've had them poke their head out to try to bite the herring out of the water. There are a dozen types of rockfish in Alaska waters. And not to mention we have our halibut, flounder, lingcod, and salmon. It's pretty much a fish factory. With a full day of fishing behind us, we're headed back to the lodge for dinner. You'd think with a good dinner and dessert that you'd be fine and you could bed down for the evening. But as the saying goes, all good things must come to an end. That is, unless you're a former guide on the Togiak River. So I'm just doing a date time here, Captain Kirk. Star date, July 29th, 
July 10th, 2015, in the year of our Lord, 10 p.m. Fishing with two aliens from the northwest coast. The bite's actually pretty good. And, uh, we fished this today, but uh, the fish are still here, and uh, boys are doing their work. So what I do on these here is I just feather this back. So this is a little bit different than a conventional fillet. On this, you got all the rib bones out of it. So all of this will now come out. Cool thing about this is now all the belly meat's attached. Now if I want to just lay the whole thing on a grill, you got a big grill, you got a big party, you just do the whole thing, you got all your belly meat here. So that's kind of cool. I've really enjoyed spending a little time with Tony and, and John and him have really hit it off. It's been, it's been fun. It's like, you know, new people, old friends. Uh, the, the whole trip has just been such a cool experience to come back here and, and be able to immerse myself again in, in a place that means so much to who I am as a person today. So you can see that it's possible to turn your passion into a lifetime endeavor. All it takes is a little dedication and lots of effort. For you saltwater fishermen, there's no better place than Alaska. Prince William Sound, the Kenai Fjords are some of the best in the world. And for those of you who enjoy a day on the river, I recommend, without hesitation, the Togiak. It's one of the grand rivers of Bristol Bay.